everybody! So this is Moonlit Games, and I'm here with Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. So this is the trilogy that followed up after the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney games. And I have history with these games. <laughs> I played them through high school. I played the shit out of them, if I'm honest. Um, and I just, I love everything about them. So um, I wanted to play this since it was just re-released for Steam and Switch and probably some other platforms too. But I'm just so excited to just hop on into it because Holly is my boy. He's just amazing. Ah! I'm so excited. Okay, yes, new game. We want the first game, for sure. And Clavier. Oh, that man meat. <laughs> so if you've never seen the Phoenix Wright games or the Apollo Justice games, Basically, you're a lawyer in Japan, and that kind of makes you like a detective. And so you go around and collect evidence to make your case and defend your client. It's that easy. <laughs> but if I'm remembering right, you're going to see a lot of familiar faces from the first set of games. So if you've played them, fantastic. If you haven't, you'll get to know them and love them as much as I do. Um... Ooh, they're playing cards. Poker, probably. Yep, yeah, poker. Full houses, if I'm right. You lose. And I'll be reading reading the uh, text, but probably won't do voices or anything. Eek! Ooh, blood. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Someone was upset about their card game. I apologize in advance for the sniffles. It's just been one of those days. I seem to be in a bit of a bind. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him hard. Me? Please. Cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? Oof. April 20th, 9.37 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, Number 3. Apollo, panicked, palm sweaty, palm spaghetti. <laughs> I can admit it, I'm nervous. Ah, good morning. Who is this? Ooh, good morning, sir. Kristoff, you look tense, Justice. Wound up tight, Apollo. Wound up, sir? No, I'm loose. I'm fine. I'm loose as a goose. Kristoff, that screeching noise? Is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. Your first trial and it's a homicide. I guess justice doesn't start small, eh? Ha ha ha. Pun intended. Ha ha. Apollo, I'm, uh, I'm fine. I got up at 5 a.m. to do my cords of steel voice workout. I'm fine. Ah, Kristoff, <laughs> that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your screech. Apollo, <clears throat> I overdid it again. <laughs> As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down if you get my drift. Apollo, drift gotten, sir. I'm all over that drift. Kristoff, as it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Apollo. Yes, yes, I'm fine, sir. Kristoff, one more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. Apollo, gulp. Kristoff, I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. Okay. And I'm not going to spoil anything. I do remember large chunks of this game, but not everything. So, Apollo. My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. And today's my first trial. Not, not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of murder. My boss wants to help him out, of course, and so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him. No way. Ah! Question marks.
Apollo. Whoa. Hmm. Good, uh, morning. Morning? Question marks. Who is he? He looks very familiar. It's all up to you today. Apollo. First trial. Nervous. Meeting him. Cardiac arrest. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help! <laughs> Question mark. So you're... Apollo. Fine. I'm, I'm fine. Ah. Uh, question mark. Mr. Fine? Is it? Apollo. Uh. Question mark. I did remember you having an odd name. Apollo. Well, we're off to a great start. Apollo. Um. Are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney, and he's your friend, so why... Question mark. You'll see. Apollo. Huh? Question mark. You can do it. Be confident. Apollo. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean... I mean, I... Question mark. It's time. Shall we? Apollo. Yes, sir. Alright. It's our first case. Okay. I need to focus. First trial. Here comes justice. <laughs> and I'm going to try to do most of the cases in one go if I can. Uh, otherwise, they might be in two parts. <clears throat> Judge, the court is now in session. Pain. <laughs> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Apollo, uh, the defense is, uh, fine. I mean, ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Mind going blank. Don't panic. Ah, too late. Judge, your name was Mr. Justice? And this is your first trial. Apollo. Y yes, Your Honor, but I'm fine, really. Judge, are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. <coughs> um, uh, Mr. Gavin? Kristoff? Yes, Your Honor. Judge, I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. Kristoff, that was my intention. Yes. However, a defense attorney must always cede to his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Judge, well, of course he wants justice, but to entrust his case to this greenhorn, why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Apollo, okay, so Gavin's got trial experience, fine, but does he have cords of steel? I think you're a little too cocky, Apollo, for the fact that you've never run a case before. <laughs> okay, judge. Then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. <clears throat> judge, this is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Judge. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. <gasps> it's Phoenix! Phoenix, let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. Apollo, Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? Judge, I won't speak of it further, then. The prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges. Mr. Payne? Payne, to think I saw you enter this room a fresh attorney, and now I'll see you leave in chains. Phoenix, ah, Winston Payne, subtle as ever, I see. <laughs> Pain. The crime, occur crime occurred at the Borscht Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him. Wham! On the head. Smack. Killed him cold. Judge. Hmm. A customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant, you say he was... Pain. The pianist. Oh, Phoenix Wright. The pianist? Pain. This is the weapon that took the victim's life. A bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. Judge. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Alright. Ooh, we already have a picture. Huh. I actually want to look at it first, before we go further. Um, my attorney badge. Smith's autopsy report. 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 <laughs> the time of death was around 2 a.m. April 17th. Death caused by a single blow to the forehead. 
Crime Photo 1. The sub-basement at the Borscht Bowl Club. Okay. Hmm. So they were playing poker. There's chips. Looks like a deck. The bottle. Two comfy chairs. And a dead guy. And then we have the deadly bottle. The grape juice bottle used to murder we as the murder weapon. Bears defendant. Mr. Wright's prince. Okay. Just want to inspect it real carefully. Apollo. Grape juice. How long has it been since I drank grape juice? Apparently, it's Mr. Wright's favorite drink. I wonder how well it goes with borscht. Probably not great. I'm pretty sure borscht is a cold beet soup. Okay. <laughs> and let's look at our people here. Our boss, Christoph Gavin. Phoenix Wright. Formerly an ace defense attorney of some renown. Shadi, Shadi Smith. The victim in this case, a traveler only recently back in the country. Winston Payne. The prosecuting attorney for all his experience, he lacks a certain presence. <laughs> okay. Christoph. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record, which we just went through. <laughs> Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record? Right, Apollo. I've heard of that. Yeah, I know how to do that, so I'm good. Christoph, I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right. Okay. Judge, so the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this, um, Shady Smith fellow? I believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A traveler? Pain. According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. <clears throat> he had only returned to this country recently through his place of residence is un though his place of residence is unclear. Judge, and he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That too is unclear at the present, Your Honor. Hmm. Pain. We believe they first met at the Borscht Bowl Club on the night of the murder. Judge, if yeah, if they only had just met, then why the murder? What's the motive? Judge, perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano playing. That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. Which we already saw, so I don't know how we had it in our hands before he was even shown it, but I'm not gonna judge it. Uh, game of poker was in progress. Judge, wait a second. Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself. Is it, though? Pain. Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal. Objection! Christoph, is it true that the defendant... It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that. A game, in the purest sense. A competition, your honor. Pain. A competition? Christoph. Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs, wraithed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Judge, uh, come again? Pain. The cards on the table had blue backs, your honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present and impress women. <laughs> Judge, that will be our first order of business here then, to find out more about this fatal game of cards. Very well. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. Phoenix, my pleasure. Apollo, this is it, my first trial. Here goes nothing. Yep, yeah, so they will always give their testimony, and then we get to pick it apart, one by one. I am a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. Qua? Hmm. A pianist who can't play piano? Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Oh, shut the f- Hmm. Very well. The defense may begin with the crossover examination. Apollo. Right, Your Honor. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Christoph, are you alright? You're swelling, sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? 
Chris, I'm itching to figure a speech, Justice. Justice, your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. Pilot, my brain feels strained and raspy, sir. <laughs> I'll have to use that sometime. <laughs> <clears throat> you've watched me perform cross-examinations many times, but you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What to do? Should I ask Gavin for... No, I don't need a refresher. <sighs> Apollo, no need for help here, sir. I think I've got this one covered. Kristoff, I think you'd better do more than think. You know it or you do not. I'm fine. The corns of steel are ready for battle. Press and present. Find any consistencies and lies in the testimony and reel them to the court. Okay. Got it. Got it, Bubba. As if Phoenix Wright would never lie, and it's up to me to prove it. Yeah, I think I already see one inconsistency. <clears throat> My real job is to take on... Okay. That's not... It's... The one I think I saw is this one. Okay. So... The testimony was, the rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. But this picture looked like they only had one deck of cards. So I want to present. Uh, I guess not. So I lost a bar of, of life. Fantastic. Great. I must be on the wrong track. What? But there was one deck of cards! I guess I'm gonna have to press him on everything, which is fine. Apollo, you can hardly play? Phoenix, oh, I play sometimes when customers demand it. If I play them one song, that's usually all they want. <laughs> <laughs> Apollo, was that supposed to be a boast just now? No. <laughs> Phoenix, the title of pianist is a mask. A respectable face I wear for the world at large. <clears throat> and why are you really at the Borscht Bowl Club? My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional, after all. Pain. Bah! Do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard to, for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yeah, I don't know about that, Pain. Phoenix. Yes, your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. Pain. What? Phoenix. I've played poker for seven years in that little room, and I've never lost. Once. Apollo. What? Phoenix. You see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. Quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. Apollo, wait, you've never lost once? Not even one time? Phoenix, as I said, I am a professional. Apollo, he's played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? Eh. <laughs> Again, it could be boasting. The testimony, the room where we play, and the competition are in it. In there are the club's main attractions. Oh, I need a drink. The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction. It has quite a history, actually. The Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. Black market? All in the past. Things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice it to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. Judge, a smoky room. Gambling hoods. You know. Just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. <laughs> oh, you look bad, Judge. Phoenix, the bosses gather around the table cutting deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. Apollo, that window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout, but little else. Room. The lo uh, Phoenix, the room had a few other tricks to it, though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. 
Phoenix. The rules are simple. We play a game of... Oop. Too far. Uh... Wait, what? Yeah, the rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Two decks of cards? A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. <clears throat> There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. Kristoff. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards upon the floor, each one forming a complete deck. The crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Phoenix. Incidentally, we used two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, and the other blue. Judge. Hmm. As I recall in poker, you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. Phoenix. Heh. <laughs> yes. A game of hands. All right. <clears throat> Judge, this competition you're talking about, I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. That's right. Apollo, it was the it was a simple game after all. Judge, are you sure? Apollo, huh? Judge, people are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment that the crime occurred, yet you claim no connection to the crime. Phoenix, now that's strange. Judge, what's strange? Phoenix, I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Of course, I expect to hear a cry of OBJECTION from the defense. <laughs> I completely let that one slip by. Kristoff, don't despair just yet, Justice. Apollo, sir? Kristoff, right. There's something I'd like to I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand. And I'd like to hear it from you. Phoenix, sure. Why not? Judge. Very well. The defendant will amend his testimony. <clears throat> Apollo, just one little press. And I've got myself a whole new testimony. <laughs> I plead silent. Silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. Apollo. Silence? Phoenix. The defendant has the right to refuse to testify. I haven't forgotten everything about the law. Apollo. But why? That clearly puts you at a disadvantage. Phoenix. And it's your job to turn that around in our favor. Yes? Apollo. Great. <laughs> like I didn't have enough to do already. Kristoff. Justice, didn't you detect anything odd about that testimony? Huh? Apollo, wait, something he said did ring a little strangely. Just one thing. Now what was it? When you figure it out, I suggest presenting evidence. Evidence that contradicts the testimony. A contradiction in Mr. Wright's testimony? But why? I better check the court record. Okay, can't imagine him lying. This is your first cross-examination, take it slow. If you need more information, don't forget to press. Right, I got it, I'm fine. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're back to the beginning. And I still think... I still think the rules are simple, we play a game of poker using two decks. I still think I need to present that, but I think I needed to press it first. So let's... Nope. <laughs> I'm just still barking up that wrong tree. I'm gonna try to skip all of this. And I'm hurt. I'm hurt by it. <laughs> so much for me remembering stuff about this game. <laughs> <clears throat> That's all game and our customers are happy. I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will say I've never touched the murder weapon. Okay. It has his prints on it. Okay, let's do that. Apollo. So you say you didn't touch the murder weapon? The scrape juice bottle? Right. Phoenix. So I said. Apollo. Judge. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? Pain. 
<laughs> Payne, too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. Judge, what's this, Mr. Payne? I don't know, I want to make him sound like a weasel. I know I said I wasn't going to do voices, but he's, he's such a weasel. I examined the bottle in question, you see. And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. Objection. Judge, no need to shout Mr. Justice. Justice. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Kristoff, excess yelling can damage the judge's ears and our case. <laughs> Apollo, but what about my courts of steel? <laughs> Apollo, any, anyway, what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove he did it. Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Apollo, huh? Paint. But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Judge, upside down? What does that mean? Pain. It means he was holding the bottle inverted. And there can only be one reason for that. That he was using it to bash the guy in the head? Yeah. <clears throat> that hair toss. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe he's in pain. <laughs> Faint, yes, to brain someone with that bottle. Apollo, ah! Apollo, Mr. Gavin, I think things just turned up, took a turn for the worse. Oh? I see no problem, Justice. Apollo, huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything you'll see. Judge, defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on the bottle, this bottle to the court? Mmm. Phoenix, I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. <clears throat> Judge. Hmm. Not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. Pain. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Objection. Ooh, Kristoff. Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. Judge. And what might that be? Kristoff, on the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Judge, reported? Payne, well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright, but still that. Judge, really? Payne, mm, yes, well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Apollo, near the scene? Pain. Let's take a look at a diagram of the murder scene, shall we? <clears throat> the victim was murdered. Uh, pain. The victim was murdered in a small room in a basement, two floors down from the ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. Judge, I see, and this is the phone that made the call. Okay. So we got his cell phone. Kristoff, the defendant would have just fled the scene of the crime if he so chose. Yet he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. You claim he's being uncooperative? Irk. Paolo, nice save, Mr. Gavin. I'd better not waste this. Kristoff, I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. Paint toyed? I assure you, no one is more serious about... Kristoff, what was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment that the crime occurred? How can you possibly know this? Judge, that's a good question. How indeed? Kristoff, the answer is simple, your honor. The prosecution has a decisive witness. Paint, <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. Apollo, so someone else was in the room the night of the crime. <clears throat> that must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up until now has been a warm-up, Justice. Are you ready? I am! I am so ready. <laughs> Very well, the prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. <gasps> She's so cute! The witness will... <laughs> pain. The witness will state her name and profession. Judge, hold, hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? 
pain. I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic looking horns. <laughs> Apollo, so I used a little hair gel. Relax, people. Judge, have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. Question mark. You are sure? Judge, I swear it on my gavel. Please come out. Apollo, isn't violence against hair a crime, Your Honor? The, <laughs> the witness. Well, if you are sure it is, okay. <laughs> oh, she's so cute! Judge, um, now the prosecution... Wait a minute. The prosecution care to explain the witness's... Um, paraphernalia? <laughs> Pain. Uh, yes. She's a professional, Your Honor. Those are merely the tools of her trade. <laughs> Judge, and what would that be? Olga. And my name is Or Olga Orly. I'm employed as waitress in Borscht Bowl Club restaurant. Then why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve Borscht that is naming restaurant. But I also perform, how is said, other service. I take it one of the other services is taking the customer's pictures? Da da! Like for example, this one. That's... the defendant. Pain. Indeed. On the night of the murder... Olga. Man in white hat is one who has gone kaput. <laughs> Judge. Indeed, that is the victim. Thank you for putting it so nicely, Olga. Judge. Order, order. This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. Olga. It is same way as I drop cold bowls of borscht on laps of customers. Casually. Hmm, <laughs> judge. Then the court will casually accept the new evidence. <laughs> Olga's photo added to the court record. Not pain. Now witness, where were you at the time of the murder? Olga. I was in room. The hideout, we call it. Apollo, excuse me, the hideout? Oh, good. It is room where famous gangster bad guy... <laughs> bad guy? <laughs> was arrested. Is room where murder took place. Apollo, what? Oh, God. Your look of utter surprise it is lovely. I will post my courtroom door later for you. Da da, photos will be numbered and you will write which ones you want copy of. I'm like, that's not why you're here, sweetie. Apollo, so there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and Olga Orly. Our witness. <clears throat> and if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Olga? Judge, very well, witness. You will testify to the court about that night's events. <clears throat> Dun -dun. Olga, that night, customer asked me to deal cards for a game. It was cold. Both players played with hats on, da? The victim, he plays whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. Then, last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, da? That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. Hmm... Judge. Hmm. Incidentally, who won the game? Pain. Isn't it obvious the winner was the victim, Mr. Smith? Ah. I'm not used to reading out loud so much. Apollo. That's ridiculous. Um, because... Because Mr. Wright can't lose. <clears throat> Christoph. Ahem. Justice. Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection. <laughs> but he hadn't lost in seven years. Pain, take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose a, ca my, a case my first seven years as a prosecutor either. Incidentally, I have some evidence here. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> These are the poker chips as they lay the very moment of the crime. The hand and the chips on this side brought the defendant, Mr. Wright. Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? Da! I mean, yes. Imagine that poker is war. 
Your hand is your army, and the chips are the spoils. Judge, I, I know that. After all, in my youth, I was known as the poker head of courtroom number three. <sighs> Apollo, I think he means poker face. Judge, hmm. Looking at this picture, it does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. But we don't know how much each chip is worth. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. <sighs> Alright, let's go. That night, customer asked me to deal cards for a game. You were dealing cards? Do you do this often? Da. I am doing this. If customer wishes it, I serve anything. Borscht, cards, more borscht. It is my work. Judge, it's good to hear of a place that hasn't forgotten the meaning of service. <laughs> Olga, welcome you to Borscht Bowl Club, where Borscht is as warm as the waitress is. So cold. Apollo, thank you for not handing out flyers during the cross-examination. <laughs> it was cold. Both players played with hats on. Da. I'm press everything. It's already April. How could it be cold? At Borscht Bowl Club, we have tried an authentic rush, <laughs> rustic Russian restaurant theme. Outside is city in spring, but inside it is always as cold as, as Mother Russia. Well, no way am I going there. <laughs> I'll go. When it comes to hot borscht, cold is best seasoning. Da? All good. The victim, he plays whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. His locket? I believe it was good luck charm, da? He gripped it many times as he played that night. Judge. Yes, he must have felt as though it might carry him to the moon and the stars. Though if it were small enough to fit around his neck, it wouldn't have much lift. Hollow. Um, the defense would like a clarification. This is a locket we're talking about? I mean, a pendant with a picture in it, right? Not a rocket? Judge. Of course. I knew that. It was probably a pendant shaped like a rocket. That's why she called it that. No. A locket's a locket. It doesn't... <laughs> Christoph, it's considered a bad form to poke fun at the hard of hearing in our society. <laughs> Apollo, hard of hearing or hard of understanding? <clears throat> Pain. So what happened next? <laughs> then, last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, da. Apollo, something terrible? <laughs> Yee -yee! The defense will refrain from needless shouting. Earth? Sorry, I need to seriously reconsider this vocal training thing. <laughs> seriously. Okay, so we're not getting out of that one. Oh, I was so frightened. Ah, I was trembled with fear. <laughs> that man flew at victim and is strangling him for the- Okay, that's not correct. Because <laughs> he was bashing the head. Oh, really? Strangled, you say? That- <laughs> <laughs> giving her voice to Apollo. Oh, really? Strangled, you say? That's odd. Olga, da. Normal customers only choke on borscht. <laughs> Apollo, no, I mean, the report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head. Olga, ack. Apollo, Miss Orly, really now, did you witness the crime? Eek. Ooh, that is skills. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. He's still wearing his hat and everything. Pain, yet is a fact that he was hit, your honor. Oh, there's another picture. Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that's quite shocking, isn't it? This head certainly was hit. Thank you for that, sir. Olga, oh, but I have seen it happen. The defendant, he lunged at victim his neck. Oh, really, Mrs. Orley? I think I've caught you in your own lie this time. Christoph, justice. I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think through this... Think this through once more. Mm, what do you mean? I found a contradiction. There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue the cross-examination. This horse is dead. Let's stop beating it. There's such a thing as thinking aloud too much, too. <clears throat> a 
Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want to look at this again. Single go to the forehead. Let's just take a glance at this. Okay. Cell phone. Wow, the battery's being held in with a piece of tape. You should buy a new one. Maybe he can't afford it, or he just doesn't care. Okay, nothing too suspicious. <clears throat> Petroshka dolls, prices, a piano. I'm trying to think, how would you pick up a bottle of, of grape juice? It w your hand would be upside down, right? Like when you're bending down wrapping your hand around like the neck it would be like if you were going to hit someone with it i guess borscht some kind of bread thing this gents Ooh, the locket wait a minute okay um pendant and victim ships when the crime took place okay because right now i think phoenix has the locket around his neck yeah, so here he has it around his neck, and here he doesn't. So maybe he lost it while gambling? Hmm. <laughs> Let's try this one. Pilot, you know, there was one curious part in her testimony, just like Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what is it you're thinking intensely about? Pilot, recall the testi testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on the locket at his neck, I believe she said. And I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. <laughs> no, but look at this photograph. Look at this photograph! Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Kristoff, well done, Justice. I am impressed. And you need, I knew you'd be able to handle this. But, but what does it mean? If we are to believe this witness's testimony, testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets just don't disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, someone must have taken it off. Oh my gosh, no. Taking it off. Wait, you don't mean... Kristoff, the defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. Wait, what? Kristoff, he was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Ah. Urk. Judge, def defendant, what do you have to say to this? <clears throat> well, he's wearing it right now. Say, Phoenix, yes? Judge, I just noticed this, but you have something hanging around your neck, don't you? Phoenix, oh? You mean this? Yes, it's a locket with a photograph inside. A photo of my daughter. Apollo, come again? Judge, Mr. Wright, you have a daughter? Payne, we confirmed it at the time of the arrest. The picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. Apollo, so Mr. Wright has a locket too. Why don't I buy this, that this is just a coincidence? Well now, if the results of this poker game led to the murder, perhaps we should hear more about the outcome of the game. Payne, further testimony won't really be necessary. It's clear the defendants lost badly. Mm. Mrs. Early, you'll testify to the court about the game played between the victim and the defendant. Da. Serious competition. The game began with 3,500 points in chips for each man. House chips come in two sizes, small and large. The one who, has, who was winning, Da, it was the victim. For last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. The moment loss was decided, defendant grabs bottle from table and... 
Indeed, looking at the picture. Mm. As the court knows, poker was the defendant's life. Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Judge, ha, how many times have I heard these words? I've done it in a fit of anger, your honor, and now I regret it. A common tale, but true. Apollo, methinks the judge watches too many old court movies. <laughs> Mr. Wright said he hasn't lost in seven years, so this testimony must be wrong. I still think there's something up with those chips. Um, okay. Are those the usual starting points? Were any special rules used? No, not special. Usual game, usual rules. If each man began with 3,500 3, points, then the total would be... Um, exactly six... No, 7,000 points. Please, this is calculus. Not even long division. All ships come in two sizes, small and large. Are the chips in this photo all the chips that were used? Da, da, of course. Something's fishy with these chips. Should I press harder? Yes. Maybe you could explain a bit about these chips. Explain? What is there to be explained? Poker chips are poker chips. They are not fish and chips. Not a chip of the chip off the old block. Not a motorcycle chip. Apollo, thanks. Now that I pressed her, I better ask something. What are these chips worth? Are they in dollars or rubles even? Yet, as I have been saying before, it was game, not gambling. Hard perhaps for capitalists to understand. Two types of chips: 100 points chip and 1,000 points chip. It is not money, da. Christoph Justice. Sir! Don't you find her comment... interesting? More ways than one, sir. I'd have it added to her testimony myself. Well, does the defense want the witness to add her testimony? Yes. <clears throat> I think this deserves further scrutiny added to the testimony. Very well, witness, if you would be so kind. Da, your honor. Mr. Gavin said this testimony is important. To be honest, I have no idea why. Mr. Justice, do the court a favor and think of what you want to say before raising your hand. You're not in kindergarten. Okay. Um, the two types of chips. The, um, the small ones are a hundred and the big ones are a thousand? Uh, right? Right, of course? Pain. Ha! Don't waste our time. <sighs> um, yeah, that's all. Great, Mr. Gavin, maybe stop her. Now I'm the one who looks dumb. Oh, Justice. Please try not to embarrass me like that. Sorry, Christoph. Christoph, there's a clear contradiction in the information you have in your hands. What? It's a simple matter of calculation. Come on, try it. We're not in kindergarten after all. Calculation? Yeah, I think the points are switched. You're sure it was the victim who won? Absolutely sure? Pain, it seems our new attorney is a bit confused. A glance at the picture is enough to tell you who won. If you're not in kindergarten. Why do you keep saying I'm in kindergarten? Ah, just because I'm short and my hair provides some height to me? Come on, man. Uh, judge, um, just for safety's sake, could you explain the problem to the court? Apollo. Of course, Your Honor. In this photo, I see small chips and I see large chips. Tell me, which were worth a thousand points? Why, the big ones, of course. Duh. Apollo. Oh, I thought so too. But then the totals don't add up. The totals? I didn't even have to do the math. Yeah. Let's review what the witness told us. Each man started with 3,500 3, points in chips. And the combined total value of the chips was 7,000 points. Yes. If I, my calculations are correct, let's see. 3 plus 1, carry the 5. Apollo, um, they are, Your Honor. Now, look at this photo that allegedly shows all the chips. 
if the big chips are worth a thousand points and the small chips are worth a hundred, and you add them up, pain. How much is it? <laughs> Apollo, do it yourself. You aren't in kindergarten, are you? Ten thousand six hundred points. The chips don't add up. This clearly contradicts the witness's testimony. Pain. But why? How could this be? He's Kristoff. Exactly, Justice. Now that you know the what, you must determine the why. Apollo, right. There's only one possible way to explain this contradiction. Uh, chip count was wrong. Starting points were wrong. Both were right. Each man began the game with 3,500 points. If all the chips are indeed shown in this photograph, then there can be only one answer. Well, what is it? The value of the chips was the other way around. Pain, what? Want to know what I think? The small chips were worth a thousand points, not the big ones. Pain, madness, utter madness. Judge, show me the that photograph of the chips again. There's six small chips, then ten large chips. Why, that does make seven thousand points when you add them up. Kristoff, excellent work, Justice. It's almost as though you figured it out by yourself. Well, I'm just glad I was the one who said it. <laughs> Pain, but wait. The value of the chips may be different, but that changes nothing. Indeed, the victim did have the larger number of chips still. No. Judge. Ah! Exactly. The small chips are a thousand points. The large chips are a hundred points. Let's do a little math. Add up the points for each side of the table. Pain. Uh, <laughs> Judge, the victim, Mr. Smith, had 2,900 points and... The defense had 4,100 points. Well, no. Seems that Mr. Wright was winning that night after all. Pain, that's impossible. Apollo, my client had even less reason to kill the victim. After all, he was winning. Yarg! <laughs> Apollo, now Mrs. Orley, you must have known the true value of the chips since you were here, there at the scene of the crime, weren't you? Yeah, I don't think she knew was really there. Order, order. It appears our defendant has lost his motive. Mr. Wright's supposed defeat never happened. We must now ask ourselves whether we can trust the witness's testimony. Excuse me? What is it, Miss Orley? I did not want to be saying this, but... Actually, you see, um... See what? What do we see? In the last hand, there was cheat. There was cheat? A cheat? You don't mean a trick? Wait, or do you mean a scam? They're all the same thing. Yes, there was cheat in last hand. That's why game ends with chips the way they are. The way they are. <laughs> great, that's great. First we have lying, now cheating. Well, this case certainly has taken a turn. For the interesting. Witness, you will please testify to the court. Tell us about this cheating in the final hand. Ooh, I need to stretch. Stretch, 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 stretch. <sighs> the final hand. The last hand, both men had a full house. There's four of each card in deck from ace to king. If you look at both men's hands, cheat is more obvious. The next moment, game becomes argument. Da! The defendant's trick was exposed. He took the bottle in his hand. Poor Mr. Smith. Miss Orley, why did you not tell the court about this from the beginning? I thought I smelled a cover up here. Well, folks, it's time to throw back the covers. Hmm. Full House is a very high-scoring hand. Not easy to make in my experience. That alone is enough to suspect less than scrupulous tactics. Hmm. Mr. Gavin? What's a full house? Three of a kind and then a pair. Paying lawyer these days, you don't know your poker? That's nice. Judge, I can't say this bodes well for your case or your career. Apollo, what is this? Some kind of secret court poker ring? Justice, you know the terms one pair, two pair, and three of a kind, yes? Uh, yeah, no problem. Two cards with the same number making a pair, three... Makes three of a kind. 
Good. Now picture a hand with one pair and one three of a kind. Hmm? That's a full house. Hmm, that doesn't sound very easy to make, does it? You can see each player's hand in this photo. And they both have full houses. Ah. There's one easy way. You go undefeated for seven years. You cheat. Judge. Ahem. The defense may cross-examine the witness. If you did cheat in the last hand, that still leaves one important question. Mr. Wright, lost that hand? Who's ever heard of a professional con man losing the way the, <laughs> losing when they cheat? I don't think he's a con man. And I don't think he's the one who cheated. Just because I know... I like Phoenix. And I, I know Phoenix. Hmm... How is it more obvious? How is it clear? Da, well, the defendant. He played a fifth ace. A fifth ace? I still remember both hands very well. Uh, yeah. Obviously, cheating is a foot, or perhaps I should say a hand. Your Honor, perhaps this can be added to the testimony without Mr. Payne's joke. <laughs> the witness will add this to her testimony. Bullets! But that, to me, that makes Mr. Smith look like he played a fifth ace. Duh, it should not exist. No, I still remember both hands very well. But wait. No, it should be fine, because they play with two decks of cards. Well, there did this card come from them. Perhaps we should ask the defendant the very question. Adding cards to a duck is no less serious th a taboo than than forging evidence in a court of law. Kristoff, now perhaps it's time for you to say something, Justice. You bet. I have no intention of saying quiet, not me, no sir. Better find some contradicting evidence, fast. No, it's not right. Shoot. So I'm gonna save because I'm losing stuff very fast. what the men were arguing about. Da, I believe so. The victim, he shouts, you're a cheater, and then the defendant shouts something like, I have objection. <laughs> Shouting objection, eh? Old habits are hard to break. First he bluffed his way through the courtroom, now he bluffs his way through life. However, Mr. Wright lost the hand. That seems to be the cast to cast the shadow of doubt on Mr. Smith. Humiliation from losing even when cheating, that is what set fire to defendant's heart. So what did the flaming defendant do next? <clears throat> hmm. I'm gonna try this. Okay, no. No. I'm gonna load. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to think before you make an accusation. Okay. He took bottle in hand. His hand poor Mr. Smith. First she says it was serious competition. Now she, 
she's saying that there was cheating. Justice, notice anything odd? Her testimony keeps changing. Now she says the defendant cheated. Actually, yes, I had noticed that. Let's get the truth about this cheating first, shall we? Right, leave it to me. Okay. So I think I'm... Objection! Oh, come on! Seriously? Well, I'll take the hit. But no, that should show... Well, I love these games. Some of them are a little... nitpicky. Hmm. Yeah, your testimony keeps changing. Did I press this? I can't remember. <laughs> Do you recall what the men were arguing about? Oh yeah, okay, I did talk to her about this. The victim, he shouts, you are a cheater. And then the defendant shouts something like, I have objection. Okay. Now yeah, we heard this already. Objection! However, Mr. Wright lost the hand that seems to cast a shadow of doubt on Mr. Smith. Humiliation from losing even when cheating. That is what set fire to defendant's hearts. So what did the flaming defendant do next? take some time and think about this and come back next time to finish this case. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!